to six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here, out to show you an implement that I got to spend some time with here this afternoon. This is a flail mower from Titan Implement. I'm going to show you around some of the things that make this flail mower a little bit different, show you some of the features and see if it's something that might work well behind your tractor. There's two things here that are important to understand about this implement before we kind of get through its features in construction. The first one is the company that's coming from, so this is an, an attachment from Titan implement. There are two Titans in our industry, Titan Implement and Titan Attachments. Titan Implement is an implement manufacturing company in Tennessee. They build and weld a lot of their own stuff. Also like a piece like this, they do import some things from overseas and brand. The other Titan is Titan Attachments. Titan Attachments is a no-name warehouse in a business park that imports a lot of things primarily from China and sells them online. They're not a dealership or an implement manufacturer manufacturer really tied to our industry at all. They are simply a distribution point for things from overseas. So these companies operate a lot differently. This is one that's going to have local support, local sales reps, local parts distribution that we can get support on, which is always something that's important to us as a retailer of these things, is having that infrastructure in order to back them up. Another thing that you should understand about agricultural implements is their country of origin. We do make some stuff here in the United States, including flail mowers, but a lot of the things that you're gonna find out there on the market are imported from other countries. Now, most of the time when things are made like that, the country, the company manufacturing that implement is gonna make it really for their domestic market, and then it may be exported somewhere else. When you go through and you look at the different places that things are made, a lot of your kind of predispositions of the quality of things from those countries tend to hold true with this kind of stuff. So things that are gonna come out of China tend to be pretty cheaply made. You kind of have some South Korean or second tier stuff made up in there, South Korean India. And then the best of the best tends to come out of European countries or the United States. This is something that's coming out of Italy. So when you go through and you look at the construction of this piece, you tend to find a little bit better quality bearings, Italian gearboxes and that kind of stuff, they're gonna be a notch above the stuff that's brought in from say China and other companies. The stuff that we make here in the United States, yes, we do still manufacture things here, uh, tends to be the more high-end stuff. So when we're getting up into uh, road mowers and, and really high-end, high horsepower, big heavy flail mowers, tends to be the stuff that's built here in this country, not the lower end stuff like this, geared towards smaller, less expensive tractors for, for lighter duty applications. Now this mower is gonna sit kind of in the middle price point of your different options out there. It's not the cheapest of the cheap, but by no means is this a high-end model. And one of the places why there, there's a little bit of that cost savings is here in the hitch. So the mowers that I've run on this tractor in the past have had the ability to offset, and that was by having the mower sitting a little bit further behind the tractor and being able to swing to the left or the right. In the case of this machine, this one's fixed behind the tractor and doesn't have that swinging mechanism, and so there's a little bit of cost savings there. Now, because of that, this thing is actually built offset. If you look here, the right-hand side of the mower sticks out a little bit further beyond the tractor than what the left-hand side does, and you would be able to go through here and make some adjustments here and rearrange some of these hitch pieces to change how that offset works a little bit. So there's some configuration that you can do back here for your particular tractor, but it's not as easy to offset is what some others are. You'll notice too that I have this right on my three-point hitch. This is not quick hitch compatible, a little annoying. Something that I tend to like in this stuff is buying quick hitch compatible implements, but in this kind of stuff that's pretty kind of hit and miss on what you're going to find for your options that are out there. So this one is not. I did have to remove my quick hitch in order to put this onto the tractor here today. If you look at your different options for rear mounted mowers, you're generally gonna have a belly mount mower if you're gonna mow around your house and do your lawn or something like that. But if you're getting into more rugged conditions, you're gonna want a mower on the back of your machine. Generally a rotary cutter if you're doing more woody things or a flail like this if you're in mostly grassy and sticky conditions. One of the things that makes these things cut surprisingly well is this big roller across the back. So even though this is a big, kind of a more rugged mower for heavier conditions and is chewing up taller 
grass, you'll be surprised by what kind of a nice stripe that you can lay with this roller here. Another interesting thing about this mower are these guards that are here towards the front. A lot of mowers are going to use chain shielding in order to, to protect from flying objects. This one has these guards here in the front that will kick back easily if you run over something, but aren't able to go forward if the mower hits something and throws debris. And I really like that from a safety aspect. It's a really interesting solution to that problem. You can choose on a mower like this what kind of knife is on the rotating drum down here on the bottom. You're usually going to have the option between a Y blade, it's kind of called a grass knife, or a hammer like this. The hammer is going to have a little bit more mass in them and do better in chopping up wood and that kind of stuff if you're running over woody and brushy type material. The Y knives tend to do a little bit better in grassy conditions and are going to cut the grass a little bit more finely. That's not to say that these hammers can't cut grass. They certainly can, despite the fact that there's nothing sharp about these things at all. They do a pretty nice job out here today. Um, and, and really, when they get down to the dirt and that kind of stuff, if you knock these things into the dirt, it's not like you're going to dull them because of the surface that's on here. Um, things that tend to be sharp, as soon as you get into dirt and that kind of stuff, like you do with this kind of thing, tends to dull stuff right away. So these hammers seem to be a pretty good solution. I'm happy with how they're doing out here today, and I've heard that from other people as well that tend to be happy with this option. So if you're purely in grass, you might want a Y knife, but a lot of times you're seeing people choose the hammer option. It is typical with implements at different price points that your more expensive stuff tends to have a little bit better quality gearbox and bearing on it. So there's drive components that are really costly in this kind of stuff and are a big driver in the price point of your implement. With this stuff, there usually is a, a very legitimate, you get what you pay for with this kind of stuff. And you'll notice that here in the bearings. The bearings that are in here are substantial. They're certainly gonna do the job. They're nice and big and chunky. They are not a name brand that you're going to recognize. And that is a little different when I was looking at some more high-end or uh, flails that we've gone over in the past, some of those will use name brand bearings and this kind of stuff, and these are not one that I recognize. Um, again, uh, there's plenty of heft here, but if you're looking for a part 20 years down the road, you're gonna have a lot more success with something that has a name brand and a number on it that you might need to cross-reference. So I set the thing down here and drive back and forth. If you've run a rotary cutter before, you'll notice how quiet this thing is. You don't get that huge moving mass, not whoa, 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 that you do out of a big rotary cutter. You can laugh at me for making that sound. Um, whales tend to run pretty quiet, which I like. Um, you'll notice out here, this is not a lawn at all. It's pretty ruddy. Um, oftentimes, you'll see people trying to take care of this kind of area with a zero turn mower, which is what I had been doing earlier. Uh, the last time I cut this was on a, an older new zero turn that I've got. And in order to be able to cut the grass, I had to use that zero turn with the deck raised up the entire way. And it's ruddy enough out here that even when I was doing that, I was still catching the ground and stuff at times and knocking dirt out of my mower. With a flail like this, this is dropped the entire way down on the ground. I could get really close to the ground here and actually give a really nice finish to this. And with these hammer knives, I don't have to worry about hitting the dirt and that kind of stuff. I'm not going to mess my mower up in the same way that you will with a mower deck that's made for high blade tip speeds and grass finishing and that kind of thing. So the, the ruggedness of a flail like this makes it good for the times that you're going to drag it through the dirt or you may hit a rock or a stick that's buried out here. Uh, you'll also notice too that they don't tend to clump because it's going to discharge out the back. My side discharge zero turn mower left a lot of these piles of grass and stuff behind. And the flail just does a much better job of distributing the clippings here as I go back and forth. I've had a lot of conversations with the guys about sizing of flail mowers. Um, the horsepower requirements of these things tend to be I feel overstated on some of the spec sheets. Uh, they don't put a huge load on your tractor. So when you're looking at sizing one, I generally will oversize the flail compared to a lot of implements that you might put on a tractor. So this is a machine that generally we will be looking at a 60 inch rotary cutter on. Um, I don't have any concerns about a 66 or even a 72 inch flail behind a tractor like this. Uh, more than enough horsepower to run it. To, 
dimensionally it's close to the machine so your weight is nice and tight to the tractor. You're not dragging this big mower behind you. So I'm okay with that. Um, it also is gonna help you trim a little bit. When you look at the flail, yeah, take the sticks. When you look at the flail, you have an end drive on it so you can't really trim off of this one side. So you wanna have it offset usually. So if I was gonna go through and set up that hitch, I would set it up to have an offset on one side. So if I have trimming and stuff to do, I've got a good offset off the side beyond the tractor that's gonna make it easy to get up against things. So that's a little bit on the Titan flail mower. And I'm really impressed by flails overall. It's funny how there's regional differences and what implements are used in different areas. Our geographic area for a long time really has been dominated by rotary cutters and it's been pretty unusual to see these behind many tractors. But as I started to like them more and we've started to stock more of them now, um, we're definitely starting to sell a lot more and seeing a lot more interest in this type of mower for these more grass-based maintenance type applications, right? When we're taking care of areas like this. This did a great job out here today and even though I'm doing kind of a finished mower type task, it did unquestionably a better job than my zero turn mower did in these rough conditions where I was getting clumping and having to hold my deck really high up in the air. Uh, the flail really did a great job out here today. Like I said, there's different brands at different price points that we're gonna be able to offer. If you check messix.com, the ever-changing implement market right now, kind of on the backside of COVID, we've got supply and demand completely messed up, steel surcharges that are going like nuts, trucking issues right now. Everybody always wants pricing in these videos and these videos are out here for years. So there's gonna be links if you're shopping for a flail mower up here in one of the cards or down in the video description to go to messix.com. You can see all the different flail mowers that we have, different price points for them, what we happen to have in stock, calculators that will give shipping amounts to your door for these different things. So this one's gonna sit about $500 less money than the more premium ones that are out there. I would say you are giving up a little bit, but it strikes a really good value. This is priced down um, at rotary cutter or below pricing for something that I really think has a place behind a lot of people's tractors. So if you're shopping for an implement and we can help or if you have parts or service needs for equipment you've already got, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com. Look at that huge moving mass, that boom, 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 boom that you do out of a big rotary cutter. You can laugh at me for making that sound. Uh, boom, 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 boom,